Hi, and welcome back to Leslie's Lab. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a spectrometer that I've designed and built for the Raspberry Pi 4. I've made all of the stuff available on GitHub, including all of the software. Um, I'll link it in down below so you guys are free to duplicate this and build it and have fun with it. Um, for now, let's stick this on the bench and take a look. So this is a Raspberry Pi spectrometer that I've built. Um, consists of a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we've got a Pi Cam, uh, a zoom lens, and a diffraction grating spectroscope. Um, when I built this, I wanted to make it out of widely available components. Uh, I mean, the second-hand stuff shows up on eBay from time to time, you know, like surplus stuff. Um, but, you know, you know, will it be available next month kind of thing? So I, th I thought I'd put something together that was, um, you know, you could build out of commercial stuff. So the spectroscope itself, um, it's this unit here, that's it, um, and it, it just dismounts, uh, which is kind of handy because I do like to look through this with my eye. Um, I've got a nice little aluminium mount for it. Uh, the Pi camera itself, there's nothing too special about it. It's a, a, a Raspberry Pi camera with an M12 uh, mount on it, and I've attached to it a CCTV lens. Uh, you can pick these up off uh, eBay if you look for f1.6 zoom lens uh, for CCTV with an M12 mount. Uh, that's that. There is a heat sink on the back. Um, it's just a piece of metal. Uh, the camera isn't cooled or anything like that. It just so happened that it was the right size to mount the Pi Cam on. Um, everything is mounted on a, a nice piece of aluminium just to make things nice and sturdy. So, you know, we can make some measurements with this stuff. We can take some spectra. Uh, we can maybe examine the uh, output of the dye laser with it and things like that. Um, obviously, we need software uh, to run this thing. So, I've written my own software for it. Uh, basically, I went looking for uh, suitable stuff to run on the Raspberry Pi, um, but there wasn't anything really that floated my boat. Um, so I've, I've written my own. So let's take a look at the software. So here is my GitHub repository. Um, and in order to run this uh, really nice software, which has got a nice GUI, uh, we need to clone the repo first. So we'll just grab that URL and clone it and uh, we'll take a look in there and you can see there's two programs in there there's two because i made a modification to it so that we could change um smoothing uh, in the graph but anyways uh, there's a little file called dependencies let's take a look at that first um, so we'll just cat it um, so we've got a number of things that we need to install here. We've got to install Python 3 OpenCV and a couple of other bits and pieces. So let's just go and grab those. But the installation is pretty straightforward. So we'll grab that. Uh, this might take a wee minute. So go and grab the next one. Right, so now all the software is installed, um, we should be able to start this thing up. Let's just do a quick LS, make sure we are where we think we are. And I'll make these executable. There we are. So now if I want to run one of these things, I can just do dot slash pi spectrometer, pick my version. I'll go for version two. There isn't much difference between them as you'll, uh, as you'll see on my GitHub. Uh, but if we give it a minute to start, We've got a nice little GUI, so I'll get rid of the terminal. We don't need it. Um, so here's, here's my GUI. I'll just get rid of the browser as well. There we are. Um, awesome. Obviously, we're not looking at anything yet, so I'll point the spectroscope or spectrometer out of the window. Um, you can see the spectrum's at, a, at an angle on the screen there. So I will just do a manual adjustment um, on this side. I can just rotate the spectroscope. Um, we'll try and get a little better focus. I think that's about as good as we'll get. Um, yeah, so this is this is all that there is to it, really. We've got a nice little preview window over here, and the line in the middle uh, denotes where it is we're picking off our data from. Uh, we've got a nice little home CV graph down at the bottom. Um, with our peaks labeled um, and then we've got a, a calibration section here that we'll look at in a minute. 
Um, we've got these three sliders down at the bottom. Uh, one is for width and threshold. Uh, this is the width and the threshold of the peaks that we want to label. Um, so if we set the width very, very narrow, we'll get lots of labels. And if we set it very high, we'll only get like major peaks. Um, threshold is just like vertical threshold. So if we turn that way up, uh, we'd maybe only highlight those two peaks up at the top here. Um, obviously, this isn't calibrated at this time and the red button up the top says calibrate. Um, so we'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, the filter performs some smoothing. Um, if we turn it off, so if we put the slider right up at the top, we can see um, we've got quite a jagged edge. Uh, and if we turn it way down, it really, really rounds off um, all of those peaks. Um, you know, by default, these things are more or less in the middle. Um, and that's generally fine for um, stuff that I'm interested in for sure. Uh, but you know, you can tinker around with these values. So obviously this isn't calibrated yet and we need to calibrate it before we can perform any serious measurements. Uh, so I've just set up two uh, lasers uh, pointed at a piece of card in front of the spectroscope. And if I move my hand out of the way, we can see the two peaks. Um, the two lasers I have, uh, one is a gas laser, it's a he helium neon laser at uh, 632.8 nanometers. And we've got a little DPSS uh, laser pointer at 532 nanometers. Um, in order to calibrate this, all we have to do is to very carefully try and click on the graph um, in the center of our peak. Uh, so that gives us our first point and we can put 632 in the box, well 633 because we'll just round up uh, integer values in here only. And we'll come along to here and see if we can grab 532, 532 and then we'll hit calibrate. Um, close enough, right? This, this reads 531 now and this reads uh, 633. Uh, so we're all good. So now if I point the thing back out of the window, um, we should find, or we should be able to actually make a, a reasonable, you know, we could, we could reasonably say that the peak here is probably 584 nanometers plus or minus, and this peak is probably 520 plus or minus. Um, so yeah, pretty reasonable uh, piece of kit. It's, pretty, it's a pretty fast frame rate as well. If I put my hand in front of it, um, you know, the graph updates uh, pretty quickly. Um, let's take a, take a look at some other cool stuff. So yeah, this is, this is my rather clutched together setup here. Um, just a quick test. I've got a bare helium neon laser tube and I'll get into why that is in a minute. Um, but yeah, I've got my green laser pointer, uh, my helium neon laser tube. Um, I've got my spectrums displaying on the screen. Um, if I bring in uh, another red laser pointer, uh, if I look over at the screen there and I'll swing the camera around in a minute, we're reading 662 nanometers, which is about right. We'd expect a red laser pointer to be, you know, around about 660 nanometers. And if I come in with a, a violet laser pointer, we'll get something a little bit different on our screen. So here's the view through the spectrometer once again. Um, I'll shine the violet laser pointer at the paper and we'll see something quite a bit different happen here. And we can see our peak, uh, which looks the wavelength looks a little bit on the low side, but it's not outside of the bounds of possibility. I would have expected, you know, 400, 405, something like that. Uh, maybe there's a little non-linearity uh, in the setup um, at one end. But what's interesting is the fluorescence uh, from the paper. I've mentioned in a previous video when I was playing with uh, nitrogen lasers and dye lasers, um, that paper is quite fluorescent. White paper has a, a Kumarin dye in it. And we can see that it's fluorescent all the way through the blue, the blue green, um, quite way into the green and maybe a little bit of yellow as well. I'll try and get a little bit closer with it. Um, yeah, pretty fascinating. Um, I reckon, I, I would say if I was to compare this with Kamarin, we wouldn't be far off. It probably is a Kamarin dye. I've just set up a fluorescent tube here that I've connected to a little high voltage power supply in front of the spectrometer. So let's take a look at the spectrum for it. So here's the spectrum for the fluorescent lamp. Um, you, you know, really, really nice lines resolved in the little preview window there. Um, we can see some strong line at 612 um, and some various other bits and pieces. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Um, like I say, you know, have fun, play around with it. Um, perhaps spend a bit of time, I've, I've sort of disassembled this on camera when, uh, when I was setting it up there, so I haven't really properly calibrated it. I suspect that this little peak here should probably be more like 400 nanometers. Um, and that one should be 650. I mean, I suppose we could uh, calibrate this just now. I mean, about calibration, um, you don't have to use a laser to calibrate this. You could actually use a fluorescent lamp. So if I 
let's go back to GitHub because I actually wrote this stuff in there as well. Um, so if I scooch down there, yeah, we've got a properly calibrated setup here. So about 405 nanometers for this little peak and 650 for that little peak. So we can go back um, we can hit clear. We can go and click that peak and that peak and we can say 650 and 405. That seems a little bit more reasonable. Um, yeah, so we've got a peak here at 611 and I actually put up on GitHub as well uh, what these various peaks were as well, I think. Yeah, so we've got a peak at 405, 535, 545, 650, um, which are this, that, that, and that respectively. Um, they're actually from mercury vapor and europium, um, which is one of the lamp phosphors is actually visible as a very tall peak at 611 uh, nanometers there as well. So the reason I've used a bare helium neon laser tube, I mean I've plenty of helium neon lasers but this one's been stripped out of the case, um, is so that I can take a look at the spectrum of the helium neon laser tube itself. Um, the helium neon discharge has many many discrete lines uh, available in it which is kind of fascinating to look at. So here's the emission spectra of my helium neon laser tube. Uh, this is the incoherent light coming out from the sides. And we can see that there's many, many lines all the way from uh, what looks like ultraviolet here, um, all the way through to red. You know, so we've got line at 670, 641, 531, 498, and so on. Uh, we'll play around with the filtering a little bit and see if we can tidy that up. Awesome. So we can see there's the 633 line, um, or 632.8. We've got 616, 609. Uh, you can actually buy helium neon tubes that will laser on some of these other lines. So I think at about 610 or 615 nanometers, you can get like orange, um, you can get a yellow helium neon laser, and you can get green helium neon lasers as well, because some of these lines or some of these transitions um, are capable of lasing in special circumstances. Um, but yeah, pretty damn cool. Um, as for the rest of the software, there's a little snapshot button. Um, all it does is take a snapshot of the graph. Uh, just this section, it doesn't bother with the top section. Um, so if I have a look in my uh, home directory, Pi Spectrometer into source, we'll see um, our image there, uh, which is kind of handy, you know, so if you want to take a snapshot of something interesting, um, you can save them. Uh, saves them as a JPEG with the date and timestamp as the file name. So just a quick run through what is on GitHub. Uh, in the media folder is just the images that are used in the readme file. Uh, in the source folder is our sources, uh, our two programs, and we've got the readme. Uh, so it says the Pi spectrometer is a Python, OpenCV, and TK implementation of an optical spectrometer. Uh, motivation uh, you know, behind this build was to build something that was cheap out of readily available parts you know, without critical alignment, all that kind of carry on. Um, I'd looked into other stuff uh, like the Hamamatsu uh, breakout boards, but you know, these were like running 300 plus bucks. Um, and the resolution was actually pretty poor for these. It was like 15 nanometers. Uh, for this thing, you know, if you spend the time and set it up correctly, you can get like plus or minus two or three nanometers, which is uh, pretty, pretty good for, you know, very cheap kit. Um, it's linked to my channel. Um, the program is free, right? It's free as in beer for non-commercial use. Um, if you want to use it commercially, send me an email, we'll work something out. Um, if you've gotten value from these kinds of projects, uh, you know, and you think they're worth something to you, I'm quite happy to accept a donation of a dollar or something. Um, yeah, so there's a breakdown of all the hardware. Um, I've got the links of where to get the spectroscope. I'm not affiliated with these people. If you look around, you'll probably find a better deal on uh, YouTube or Amazon or whatever. They're just pocket spectroscopes. Uh, it's linked to the Raspberry Pi camera with the M12 thread. Uh, these are pretty common. You can get them in most um, supply houses that you know provide Raspberry Pi kit. Uh, CCTV lens with an M12 thread. It's, it just says search eBay for an f1.6 zoom lens. Again, these are actually really good uh, little lenses uh, and they're fairly cheap as well. Um, everything's just assembled on scrap aluminium. Uh, that's it, there's nothing else to it. Uh, if we scooch down the list, um, there's installation. It's developed and tested on uh, 2021 uh, Raspberry and Buster. Um, for anything else, you know, your mileage might vary. I have tried it on a Raspberry Pi 3 and it runs a little bit too slow for my liking. You know, Raspberry Pi 4s are cheap enough, buy a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, 
yeah, it, actually the software uses the Linux video driver, not the PiCam module. If you view the source code and if you guys are interested, I'll do a whole video on the breakdown of like how the software works. I mean, I spent a bit of time developing it, so I know it inside and out now. Um, so yeah, if you want to, if you want to break down on that, I'll do it. Um, yeah, because it doesn't use the PiCam Python module, it will actually accept any camera, uh, which means you can run it on any Linux box um, with a USB web camera, which is kind of handy. In fact, most of the development work took place on my Debian box. Um, yeah, the usual stuff, attach the PiCam, enable it with Raspberry Config. I think Raspberry Pi has a little uh, GUI for that now. So we can come in there and find it. Uh, there it is. So we're going to interfaces. Make sure that camera is enabled. You'll have to do a reboot. Um, install the dependencies as, as I've showed you. Uh, there they all are. So we need Python 3 OpenCV because uh, the, the graph is, is drawn in OpenCV. Um, we need some Python dev libraries. We've got SciPy and PQ tools uh, to do some, you know, I wanted the SAV Gold filter to do some smoothing. Um, and I wanted uh, PQ tools to identify my peaks in my graph without me having to code it all. Um, yeah, how to calibrate it with lasers um, and then example spectra. Uh, so I've got an example fluorescent bulb um, we've got an example cheap laser pointer um, we've got the violet laser pointer um, and it's uh, corresponding fluorescence from the white paper um, we've got a shot out of the window at a blue sky um, don't point this at the sun, you'll damage the camera uh, we've got the helium neon laser discharge which is real, real nice to see um, and the to-do was just to add a slider to control smoothing, but I've done it. It's Pi Spectrometer version 2.py. Um, yeah, all it does is change the properties of the Savgol filter. Um, by default, set at 7, as I've showed you, um, tweak around with it. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.